Welcome to Tomorrow's World Today, a show dedicated to the discovery of innovation and cutting edge technology to be featured in the park of the future. The park includes four worlds. The worlds are inspiration, creation, innovation, and production. Each one will showcase the latest developments from the greatest companies and smartest people in the world. This is Inventionland World Headquarters. Here now is George Davison. Hey, George. Hey, Tamara. So, what does the future have in store for us today? Well, the ticket says, I see dark rides in your future. Dark rides? Yeah. What is a dark ride? Are you trying to send me on a nighttime road trip? No, no, dark rides are lots of fun. It's kind of like a roller coaster in the dark. Oh, cool, yeah, I've been on a couple of those. Those are, those are scary. Yeah. <laughs> in a good way. There's this company in Florida, mm -hmm. Sally Corporation, and they're like the best at the business of creating these kinds of rides, and they also do animatronics. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a trip in our future. Amusement park rides, animatronics, you know, George, I'm actually thinking this sounds like a trip that you should be going on. I mean, you've had this vision for the park in your head for so long. I think you should go and see some of it actually realized. You're absolutely right. Great Always? Idea. Yeah. Oh, you're strong. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. Your bag's all packed? Uh, no. Okay, you better get cracking on that. All right, I'm out of here. See you soon. Animatronics and dark rides, they've been fascinating me for years. And today, we're in Jacksonville, Florida, the home of the Sally Corporation. These guys have been putting dark rides into parks for over four decades. Tamara, you are definitely right. This one's perfect for me. Come on. Hi, George. Hey, Lauren. How are you? Doing well. Welcome to Sally Corporation. Well, thank you. Animatronics and dark rides, you guys are the best in the business. We do consider ourselves the dark ride specialists here. I need you to help me with the park of the future. Sounds like a fun project. Let's talk about it. All right. I have a ride in the park. It has to do with a lot of uh, famous inventors. Animatronics and dark rides are going to play a critical role in telling that story. I was hoping that could be an area that we could chat about. Absolutely. Well, that's what we do best here at Sally. So let's, uh, let's go take a look around and discover some animatronics that lurk in our hallways, and it'll really right. get you a taste for this whole process. Rumor has it you guys have this robot factory or something? <laughs> we do. I want to check that out. Let's go take a look. All right. Wow. Welcome to our robot factory. This is fabulous. Yeah, let me show you one of our show and tell pieces here. This is Nazir. Nazir. He's created for one of our dark ride attractions, but he hasn't been programmed yet. Oh. So why don't you take a hand in making this guy move? Great, I get to play with him then. Yeah, huh? you can play. So basically our programmer would start with a pre-recorded audio track. Yes. And an animatronic that's loaded up with pneumatic cylinders, which are pressurized air compartments, if mm -hmm. you will, and with every single movement that that cylinder has, it creates a movement for our animatronic. Yes. Our programmer will then come in and start from the head down, uh, synchronizing every single sound to the robot's movement. Animatronics have come a very long way in 40 years. You know, originally we were almost using mannequins bodies and then putting some uh, machinery and some pneumatics uh, around that to make the head maybe move, but not so much the whole entire body. Now we are used to putting motion to anything as small as just a little finger movement. Wow, what's this thing? This is a little show that we uh, did for hotel lobbies a long time ago, but this guy behind us. Oh! <laughs> now that's a show. We've produced him a number of times. Sally creates memories to last a lifetime. That's what our, our niche, this dark ride, does. Welcome to our theater, George. This is where we demonstrate our interactive dark ride capabilities. So there's targets scattered around this scene, and you'll pick up your blaster. OK. I'll turn this bad boy on, and you'll start to aim for the targets. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> this is good fun. More along the way. Let's go check out what else Sally has to show off today. Sounds great. of Tutankhamun will fall on those who enter this tomb. Oh, he's interesting. This is a walker or a zombie. He reminds me of my brother when I get him mad at me. Or me in Monday mornings. <laughs> wow, these yeah. are big, impressive. Just parts of our trade show here. We like to show off our talents. So uh -huh. we've got a really nice guy. What's this and we've, one? Uh, yeah, why don't you look behind the curtain? Oh. Of course, while George was walking through our crazy dark ride factory, we had to give him a scare or two. Well, you got me. That's good. You, you jumped well. But your project is all about lifelike animatronic figures, right? Yes. Bringing real humans back to life in animatronic form. Exactly. Well, let me show you a completed character. Oh, wonderful. All right. So right around this corner is one of our most lifelike characters. This is a gentleman for an attraction in Peru. Oh my goodness, he's impressive. Extremely lifelike. That's what we do in this department. We really finish off these robots and make them characters. So we'll add their attire, their skin tone, their fingernails, their hair that's on their head and on their nose, and we'll make them look as realistic as possible. Peru. Land of wonder, all mysterious, all mesmerizing. Would you like to go? Well, in a few months' time, you can. And trust me, you wouldn't want to miss this dark ride experience. Come with me, and I will tell you a story like no other. Soon you'll be stepping back in time, entering an environment that will take your breath away. That was powerful. He's a good storyteller. Movement, his articulations and motion, that was impressive. We really can bring stories to life with lifelike animatronic characters, so I think we can do that for you. Well, George, you've seen our shop. You've gotten the full tour. You just yes. haven't met the man behind the madness. Let me introduce you to our CEO, John Wood. Hi, nice to meet you, John. My pleasure, George. Glad you could come to the Sally Corporation, where we specialize in dark rides. I'll tell you, you do more than that, John, I think. You guys are making all this magic behind the scenes that uh, we're really interested in. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. You know, the, the idea, the, the genesis of where ideas and how companies come to be is always intriguing to me. When we first started, the idea was generated by a dental class where my partner, John Rob Holland, created the first Sally robot. He really wished he could have gone down to NASA, but at the time, they were laying off people at NASA. Mm. So he decided to follow his father's footsteps into the dental profession. Nevertheless, as an inventor type, he employed some of the concepts that had been taught to him in dental school, like mold making and impressions and mm -hmm. silicone and other processes that we were able to utilize. And he adapted this when the teacher professor said, we want all of you students, dentists to be, to create a unusual presentation. Now, I'm not talking about a slide projector or a PowerPoint. He says, I want it to be different. So he went and did a mask of one of his friends Sally, and then proceeded to create the first robotic figure. Never did I imagine that one year we would be up there competing with Disney, striving to create the same form of entertainment value with our message. And with our animatronics, we certainly captured the interest of people that wanted a dark ride. Mm -hmm. We created the stars of the show every time we built some of our animatronics to go with it. And we began developing special effects and elements that would really bring people into our stories as we told them. Creating that very believable look is one of the keys to being effective with animatronics. They have to pass that first impression, that ability to see and say, yes, man, that looks real. I'm excited. You guys seem to have all the magic that uh, we're going to need for our park of the future. We are an unusual company by all stretch of the imagination. With your leadership, I'm hoping we can move from idea 
into a world of design now and start uh, thinking about how this is going to come to life. Should be an exciting attraction for you. I think animatronics and dark rides are going to be the best way for George to tell the story of the inventions and inventors of the past. Hey, Tamara, can you hear me? Not sure how this globe phone works, Tamara. Are you there? Yeah, I see you. Or at least I think it's you. You are calling from a place that excels in making lifelike animatronics. How do I know it's really you? Tamara, it is me. Can't you tell it is me? You are hurting my feelings. Feelings. <laughs> feelings. <laughs> Well, now I really know it's you, because today's animatronics are a heck of a lot more lifelike. You got that right. The latest ones are so realistic, it's unbelievable. We're going to have to have robots in our park. George, you do know that you're on a work trip, right? Because you sound like you're having way too much fun. I'm definitely my element here at Sally. <laughs> Just as I predicted. You know, though, this whole exchange is making me think that we need some kind of secret handshake or secret code so that I know it's you and not a robot. I am sorry, Tamara. I cannot do that. <laughs> I will see you when you get back here. Goodbye, George. Hey, stranger, look at you. Where's your hair? Look at this hair, man. Good to see you. See you too, Brad. Hey, and you remember, Rich. How are you, Rich? I'm great. I'm great. So happy to be here. One of the great things about working at BRC is we're surrounded by this incredible team. We conceive, design, and produce permanent experiences for guests in theme parks, brand centers, museums, and cultural attractions. Hey, I don't think you've met Mikey. He wasn't okay. with the team when we worked with you. He's hey, an environmental designer. Nice to finally meet you, man. I'll be building spaces in the 3D world, so you can see them as we go. 3D. We may need you to move it to 4D for one of our experiences. Cool, cool. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> George called us about 10 years ago, and then he hired us to do this concept work for him. You know, we thought he was just a crazy guy with a dream at that point. And now here we are almost a decade later, and he's, he's bringing it to fruition. Well, you remember the uh, center of the park where we're oh, drawing everybody the, in? The treehouse, right? Yeah. Yeah, that is so cool, because that really is, it's the central icon for our park, both thematically and just visually. It becomes that thing that draws people in. In a blink, that treehouse encapsulates the idea and the inspiration for the park. Hopefully we can ignite all of our guests' imaginations and bring them back to that moment of uh, creativity when they were younger. I can't wait to see what we do at the base of this tree, Mikey. I can't wait to use our new technology and new design, like AR, projection mapping. We're going to build the largest tree house on the planet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all right, there we are. You want to go back? I made a special spot just for you guys. Well, all right, let's, yeah, let's do it. That's Come great. on. Great. Okay. Well, guys. The room's ready for you. All right. Nice. Oh, here come all the guys with research. This, we've been <laughs> gathering research for years since you guys have uh, been here. Thanks, wow. guys. And we decided what we would do is break each shelf into its own world. Looks like you've got a little light reading here. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. I'll leave you to it. You're going to miss out on all the fun. What do you mean? See you later. So. That's a little bit of a challenge, yes. <laughs> so, a little bit. Uh, I feel like we, we, we need to tackle this kind of in two different ways, right? First is big picture. We've got this iconic tree house. To me, like the big opportunity from a storytelling perspective on this tree is that we've got this place either underneath or next to it where we can really pulse large numbers of people through and put them in the middle of what is the central story of the place. Practically speaking, we're looking at large numbers of people needing to go through this. Probably yeah. 1,500 people every 15 minutes, roughly. That's a, lot of people. Yeah. Uh, that's a lot of people. So that probably leads us into the idea of it being some kind of theater using uh, the latest technologies in order to create special effects and kind of put us in the middle of this big idea. How do we make that work in that tree? I have a few ideas. Let me see if I can go sketch it out. So since the tree is probably going to be a cylindrical tree, there's a tree, here's your theater screen. But since it's a cylindrical, we can have a 360 screen. We can wrap around the whole tree. In the section view, like, you know, our audience walk up and they can sit like in the stadium seating 
kind of like how they did it in Rome, and the host could be down here narrating a story, and here's your theater with the clouds up here, and the host can like bring up magic, and they can shoot up. They can maybe go down in this area too. Yeah. You know, like lay down like they're in the park. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we've got some work to do between now and when we're supposed to show George uh, the, the, the model for the tree and what that theater might look like. I can try and mock this up in 3D. You know, I think I have enough to begin the treatment. We talk about the unique theatrical configuration we're gonna think of where guests look up into this environment and walk out with that feeling of, wow, I'm part of that infinite spirit of creativity. I have the power to do things that can change the world. I like the direction. So um, we've all got our marching orders uh, and we've got a pretty tight schedule so that we can show George something. What do you say we go get to work? Let's do it. Let's do it. Gildan's engineers are making apparel better by using bacteria in a natural setting to treat and clean their wastewater. At home, you can save water and energy by washing your clothes in cold water and only using full loads, because clean water is important for everyone. Gildan's biomass units are making apparel better by turning trash into energy. At home, you can make your trash work for you by recycling and repurposing items rather than throwing them away, which is a good thing. George gave us a really large task, but it's exactly the task our company was built to achieve. We've been talking for a long time about the tree and the tree house as the central metaphor for the park. We started to really explore what that might look like, something that, that is going to evoke for guests the sense of dreaming, of, of coming up with the next big idea, right? And so Mikey went and started developing first a model and then a piece of art that really reflects the idea of that tree and what that would feel like, particularly at night. I've known George a long time and he's not the easiest guy to impress. So as you can see here, our beautiful secret experience that we have underneath this tree could momentarily bleed outside and make the tree come to life through lights and sound and bring people from around the park to look towards the tree and let them know that there's something happening inside. The tree's kind of overwhelming, right? It really takes over the entire park. It becomes something you can't not look at when you're in the park. It's not a traditional treehouse that takes people into the past because this isn't about the past. And it's not a modern treehouse in the sense of it's gonna be outdated in 20 years. We want guests to be coming to this park in 100 years to look at the symbol of the treehouse and immediately think of this place. The place you go to have those great visions of creativity that can change the world. So once we'd established that kind of visual language for the tree, then we started to think, what can we do to utilize that as an opportunity and put one of our big e-ticket attractions here and immerse them in the core ideas of the park itself? Step one was figuring out what's the story we're trying to tell here, what is the emotion we're trying to evoke here in our guests, and then we work backwards from that. What do you do in a treehouse? You lay on your back and you look at the sky. What happens when you look at the sky? You see clouds. What do you notice about clouds? Clouds are infinitely creative. So we thought, why not make the hero of our show a cloud? What do I want to be today? I want to be a battleship. I want to be a dragon. Of course, every great story has an antagonist. Great creative types always run up against skeptics and negative people. So we thought, well, the perfect cloud version of that is a storm cloud. Storm cloud comes and says, no matter what you do, I can rain on your parade. I have the power to destroy everything you're doing. The fluffy cloud, rather than engaging in the anger and getting drawn into it, says, no matter what you do, even if you try to stamp out my creativity, what you do creates its own creativity. When you rain, you cause, for example, flowers to grow. You are a creative force, like I am. And if you'll give yourself to that, you can be as happy as I am. What we don't want to do is just build something that is very traditional underneath that tree. We started really exploring different ways of thinking about seating the audience, different technologies that we can use in order to tell that story and make it feel immersive. We started off with a 360 immersive screen theater. It's not just 360, but we can also make it three-dimensional. So these clouds, these characters, can immerse and look like they're popping out of the screens. And also, during the beats of the story, we can also make this 4D like we talked about the other day. It can also rain on the audience and surprise them. I love it. 
I can just feel the whole event happening. So the one thing we haven't figured out yet, we haven't named those characters yet. We know we've got this fluffy cloud and we know we've got this stormy cloud, but we haven't really figured out who they are beyond that. You know, I've got a name or two. If we're going into the cloud world and it's a positive, friendly character, I love the name Chipper because uh, it depicts happiness and he's, uh -huh. you know, yeah. good spirited, right? Yeah. And what about for our bad guy? I kind of like the stormy word. How about stormy cloud? I like that. All right. Great. So we're super excited about this. It's going to really send people out into the rest of the park inspired to feel like they themselves are creators. Well done, guys. Mikey. Pleasure. Rich. Thank you. Well done. Thanks, George. Thank you. Gorgeous. George. George, he said he was headed to Ideation Studio oh, wow. 50. Was was that you? All right, well, as long as no one else is around. George isn't the only one who wants to know what's going to happen in the future. You've been booked for print and ink will make you think. Oh, George. <laughs>